four teams. One of them definitely ain't Dallas. One goal to make it out to Vegas in a few short weeks. With all eyes on the prize, we've teamed up with DraftKings, an official partner of the NFL. Right now, new customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Yes, instantly. Download the DraftKings app now and sign up using promo code SMOKE for your shot at the crown. Bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Wondering what you can use your $200 in bonus bets on? Combine multiple bets together from the same game for a shot at an even bigger payout. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use the promo code SMOKE. Bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code SMOKE, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Welcome back, all the smoke. Yeah. Jack, go ahead, a good New York run. We back in L.A. We got round two with one of our favorites. Man, we in the building. That's all I know. He was on the purple couch last time. Yeah, legs up. Yeah. Legs up. He, nah. don't, he, he don't like this uh, this setup. He Elevated, he, man. I wanted y'all to have y'all own chair, man. Yeah. Step up. Y'all bosses, man. We <laughs> sharing chairs and shit. Y'all too grown to be sharing the motherfucking chair, nigga. Step up. <laughs> I don't even feel like I got a camera. That's fucked up. You niggas got me squeezed up. Uh, you got the big, big one, man. You got the best camera. The best camera on you. I don't like this. I don't like this. Shit. Shit. No, I don't like yeah. this shit, bro. No, <laughs> fuck that, dog. This ain't y'all spot, nigga. Y'all <laughs> squeeze me. Put that nigga on the end, dog. I don't give a fuck, nigga. This we the smoke, nigga. Uh, nigga, nigga, uh, all the smoke, nigga. We run the show. Put that nigga <laughs> fuck about Snoop. Squeeze that nigga down at the edge of the table. So if he turn any way wrong, he gonna fall. <laughs> Matt in the middle, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> First of all, we want to wish baby girl doing. Hope she's doing better. I got a chance yes, to talk to her this is, morning. Man. I Glad appreciate all that. the prayers and all the love. You know, I'm yeah. a private kind of person, but mm -hmm. my baby girl, she's like she's she's like me. Mm -hmm. So she wants the world to know what she's going mm -hmm. through, and you know, that's what I love about her is that she's her own individual, and she's got to follow the people who love her, who support her, yeah. like us. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. whatever she going through, she loves to put it out there and let people know whatever she going through, and I. I, I'm, I'm blessed to have that from her, that she's not secretive and she's putting it out there because that's how you get help. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. We're playing for her, wishing the best. Underdogs, Amazon yep. Prime drops in uh, January 26th, starring Mike Epps, George Lopez, uh, directed by Charles Stone, who did Paid in Full yes. and Drumline. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about your, your new movie coming out. The Underdogs, I play a uh, retired Football player, all-star, top five wide receiver of all time, like I would have been in real life. <laughs> um, but shocked back into reality, catch a case, got to slide back to the hood, do some community service. And, you know, thinking I'm taking the easy route out, I see some kids, and I'm like, let me just go and coach these kids and take the easy route. But I end up learning a lesson. I end up teaching. I end up finding my old community values that I've separated from, which happens when we become successful. Mm -hmm. Because we deal with the pressures of the hood, expect so much from you when you make it. So we just run away from the hood. Mm -hmm. So this character that I play is forced to go back to the hood. And when he goes back, he learns the most important lesson of his life is that family, community, and always staying rooted is the most important thing. So he's not me. But I love the fact that I could play a character that was close, but mm -hmm. not close to me. Right. This new generation of kids is talking slick. They talking slick to you on there? Say, man. <laughs> Matt, you say, got, man. Matt, you got boys. You got a <laughs> right. basketball team shit. full of boys. Mm -hmm. You've been with them for a long time. They mm -hmm. ain't just start talking like that. And it's, it's swagger. It's not even the vulgarness of what it used to be when we were kids. It's the swagger. Mm -hmm. That Got comes with, you know, you make a good move on the football field or the basketball mm -hmm. court. Motherfucker, yeah, nigga, what's happening? Like, <laughs> right, that's swag. Real, right? That's not vulgar. Like, and people have to appreciate the fact that this new generation, they express themselves a little bit differently than we did. Yep. And when we was young, they had a problem with the way we expressed exactly. ourselves. Don't forget that part. When we was the youngsters, yep. that they gave us the same flag that old men give these youngsters right. and we need to let them be young. Respect the guy. You said you wanted to find Mr. Streams. The music business is fucked up, owes you some money. Mm -hmm. Is there similar problems? I mean, obviously your, your, your game has transitioned not only to music now and in, in television, film. Do they, they find similar issues in, in streaming movies or is it a little different? It's the same situation, but the strike has created a whole new you know pathway to it. But I feel like by it being stream, there's a certain cutoff from what you can get. Box office, there's no limit to what it can do. 
because a box office can go 100, 300, 500 million, a billion. Mm, mm. But a stream, okay, I got, you watch the motherfucker for 18 billion hours. How much fucking money is that? Mm -hmm. And it's based on hours, it's based on things that you can't actually calculate. So definitely, but if you really think about it, more people are sitting at home watching movies in the convenience of their living room yep. or wherever they at than in the theaters yep. until you put out a theatrical release that demands for everyone to go watch mm -hmm. that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Explain <clears throat> us and our viewers just the, the, the streaming and why it's so messed up in music. Well, well, it's so messed up in music is because the era that I come from is physical. So we had cassettes, CDs, right? So if a CD sold for ten ninety nine, the label would get six, you would get a dollar or whatever. So if it sold a million, you know you made a million dollars. Now, streaming, it's point zero 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 point whatever half of a fucking penny to get per a thousand streams so nigga get a million streams yeah you got thirteen thousand mm. dollars damn it's like it's not adding up mm -hmm. and it's like there's no physical component to it because i may stream three of stack songs and not even hear his whole fucking album mm -hmm. but i streamed it a billion times but is that any good for him when he goes to do a show and nobody knows those other seven songs and he's standing up there looking stupid as fuck, mm -hmm. thinking he got a billion streams, but don't nobody know them other mm -hmm. songs? So it's a disconnect. Right. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm trying to put the connect back into it as far as like, give me some answers. There's some artists like LaRussell hit me. Nephew said, uh, <clears throat> I know how to get the bag. Holla at me. I'm like, yeah, I like that. Keep mm -hmm. that. That's for the youngsters. I'm going to get with you on that, mm -hmm. but I need to find something for the OGs like mm -hmm. us. Yeah. They're going to give y'all the game, but mm -hmm. they're going to push us to the side. You know how they do the, the vets? Yeah. You know, we don't know nothing no, no. more. No, yeah. right? It's, it's good to see you talking about the vets. It's good to see what they did for Face and, um, and Rakim down in Houston, Hip Hop 50. Uh, giving them that cash and honoring them. I think that was good for them, man, because you know, they both had some, some health battles. And uh, they both came up out of it. So for what Hip Hop 50 did for their own, I think that was beautiful. But you got to take care of your own, no, yep. Jack. You got to yep. set an example. We we do it privately. I've done it many years with so many artists that needed help, that needed physical and financial help. Mm -hmm. It's not a public thing for me. I'm not going to say I'm helped him. No. Right. But when they did that publicly, that's what it's supposed to be because now the young generation, respect your elders because mm -hmm. you're making all this money. Not that you have to, but if you love this rapper and respect this rapper and you see he's down on his luck, he may need some money, but he has pride. He can't right. even ask you because mm -hmm. he used to be you. Mm -hmm. Right. But you have enough man in you to say, uh, I'm going to throw you something. Mm -hmm. There's been many times where me and 50 Cent together have called some of our OGs and put bags on him. Mm -hmm. And the OG like, oh, man, nah, we like, we ain't trying to hear that shit. We know you need it. Yeah. Here, nigga. Mm -hmm. That's what it gotta be, yeah, but that's yeah. who we are. That's who me and 50 is. Right. I can't speak for everybody else, but if any OG that me and him respect, it's happened a couple of times, that's why I can bring his name up. I don't have to say the person or the right. people, but he feel like I feel. If it's an OG that need it, that's down, that don't know how to ask for it. You don't think twice. I put it in, they like, oh, 50 just, I'm like, damn, nigga beat me to it. Hold on, I got to call this <laughs> right? I don't like you beat me to the donation pile, yeah. nigga. Hold on, we're going to have to donate together. Yeah. Goddamn yeah, right. We just had Big Boy not too long, and he shared a story that had us rolling, kind of rolling after the fact, after we was laughing. But he said, uh, you almost had a real accident when this he This nigga tried van. to kill me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Explain what happened. That's when that nigga was fat, Big Boy. Mm -hmm. When he wasn't the in shape, Big Boy Hold right on, real now. Real quick, did you see the story we had with the two guns underneath his stomach? No, that nigga uh, had two guns up bro, under his stomach. Bro, we're going to show you the story. Went but go ahead, security. finish your story. So this nigga... He been fucking with me for years. It's my, I love him to death, so I'm fucking with y'all by talking about him like this, but I love him. It's my nigga, right? So he fucking with me every year. Snoop, my birthday, man. I got a birthday. When is your birthday, cuz? It's in September. Oh, nigga, I coach football. Nigga, uh -uh. I, I don't leave my kids, nigga. I love you and your birthday, but fuck you. Nigga, them kids more important. Mm. So he just keep telling me it's his birthday. It's his birthday. So one year, his birthday fall on a day where it ain't no game. And the football is on pause for this week. Or we made it to the playoffs or something. So I'm like, all right, nigga, I'm going to do it for you. Cause send me that motherfucking, uh, he got a sprinter van that he was riding in. But it was like a handicap van that he has hooked up. <laughs> send me that motherfucking handicap van you be riding in. Nigga with the beat in the back. Boom. We at the house waiting. I got about 15 homies with me. A van pull up. 
it ain't the one that he be in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real nigga, niggas in the window with the helmet on bus, one of them. I'm like, cuz you want us to ride in this? <laughs> so I'm like, fuck it, we gonna get in, cuz let's roll. We jump in. Soon as we get in there, I'm like, cuz I smell gas. I'm like, real gas, <laughs> nigga, like <laughs> Chevron, like 76, <laughs> nigga, Arco. High octane. So, <laughs> nigga, like, Shit, nigga, don't go for a nigga like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> nigga, don't you dare blame, nigga. I said, nigga, don't nobody smoke nothing. I'm, I'm smart, nigga. I'm like, nigga, I smell gas, nigga. No, don't nobody smoke nothing. I tell all the homies, give me the lighters. Take all the lighters, yeah, put them in the, the bag. Like they was little <laughs> <laughs> put them in the bag. Boom. We ride, nigga. All while we ride, niggas is doing all this shit. Niggas like, damn, cuz it's gas. Yeah, nigga what? woozy, huh? <laughs> we get to the motherfucking thing, nigga. And jump out. I don't even cuss big boy out. I just like, cuz, look, smell the woo wop. It smell like gas, cuz. He get up in there, he smell, he like, yeah, it do smell like gas. <coughs> I'm gonna let you use my van on the way back. So I'm like, cool. So we perform, jump in his van and go back. Nigga, the van we was in, that motherfucker blew up. Oh, man. <laughs> it blew up, nigga, when we got out like 20 minutes after, and my house was like an hour uh, and 20 minutes. Yeah, so, nigga, man. we'd have been in the back blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> and this nigga said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I'm sorry. That motherfucker blew all the way up, nigga. I'm not playing. He got footage of it, nigga. It's on full fire, nigga. Like, <laughs> like nobody was getting out of that. It was a handicap van. You know what a handicap van yeah. got extra locks and yeah. shit? Right. Yeah. Yeah. They can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> they <didn't> everything up. <laughs> locks like, and space. Windows, Damn, everything God. locked. Oh, shit. <laughs> Thanks, big boy. I love you, cuz. Right. If Jenny Buss calls you right now and say, Snoop, give me your honest opinion, honest opinion of the Lakers right now. I don't want you to cut back, don't hold nothing back. Give me your honest opinion of what I need to do. What, what would you tell her? <sighs> Jenny? <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know. The camera's right here. You can talk right Jenny, this is going to hurt me more. Hold on, let me light up for this. Jenny, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. <laughs> <laughs> We got to move some furniture. We got to move some furniture real fast. Some big pieces of furniture, if you if you know what I mean. We need to move some furniture around and put some dogs on the court because anytime a young team comes to town, we freeze up. We can handle the old dogs and the coulda, woulda, shouldas, but when them young goons come to town, before that little nigga John Morant got hurt, God damn, whew, he came back with a vengeance. And then you got them young goons in the league, come on, Jeannie, think about it. What are we built on? Get us some young guns out there. Old dog, you doing your thing. I'm gonna give you yours. Mm -hmm. Cud doing his thing. Mm -hmm. Other niggas, that nigga that look like me, he be hitting sometimes and he be missing sometimes. You know that nigga I be talking about 12. Yeah, that nigga. And you can't be looking <laughs> like Snoop Dogg like nigga me. not making it, nigga. <laughs> Jenny, move some furniture around. Love you, Jenny. <laughs> Love you, Jenny, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, we see that you did a little recruiting to death row and gave Steph a death row chain. What was Had that to. about? Had to. <laughs> Had to. That's that's the greatest to ever do it, man. Come on, man, Steph. What I love about Steph, not what he does on the court, but what he does off the court. Mm -hmm. He hit me before they won the ship in the season. It was like, I got this basketball thing I do in the Bay build a court, come to the community, I'm gonna do it with you in your city. Mm. I'm like, damn, that's dope that you even thought about me like that. So I'm like, the only park in my hood where all the people grew up at is King Park. Tough environment, et cetera, et cetera. Steph Curry pulls up, mm. hello, shows up, shows out. Information to the kids, share stories of how his struggle is and why he created this, chopping it up with me. Then he gave me the game on how he beat the Celtics. That was gangster. Mm. Telling me how they was young and they wasn't ready. And how certain things that they did and how they just, I'm a, I'm a coach too, so I mental. like hearing all of this mental, mental breakdown mm -hmm. of how <clears throat> he went out there and did that and how they won that ship. And then when he said something to me about legacy, I had to give him a chain. Mm. Because so, it's feel like 
he and his legacy and me and my legacy together is something that my hood needed to see. Mm -hmm. They need to see two great people that made it come back and be touchable. Different mm -hmm. ways. Come too. on, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Being touchable means so much to kids in our neighborhood. Man, that nigga was there before me, man. Steph pulled up, man, mm -hmm. in the city, man, in the, on the east side. Mm -hmm. Man, King Park. What a greats have walked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on the Clippers and that new arena. Where you think the direction they going? Hope they break bread. I'm in Englewood, I need a few dollars. Mm -hmm. you, got your, you got your store down there, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all business, and I love Mr. Balmer for what he does community-wise. Like, he's real active in the city of Inglewood before the um, stadium is built. I'm a businessman. Laker fan. Businessman. Business mm -hmm. Lakers for life. But we got to get the bag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You saw that section they have where you can only be a Clipper fan and they tell when you stand, when you clap, what color you're wearing. You can't sell your tickets to no other people. It's like a, a theme I think they got from soccer overseas, but it's a whole wall where you have to be a Clipper fan to sit in that bitch. Well, it's going to be kind of empty in that motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Remember when they used to sell Clipper uh, tickets for three dollars on shit. the floor? Yeah, those are, that, them days is long. That's gone, when uh, the nigga with the Jerry curl was on eighteen. Uh, Michael Cage. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Man, they didn't got rid of Clipper Daryl too. I, I, that's yeah. fucked up. Hey, that's so, fucked oh, yeah. up. The nigga went and painted his car and his house, his and whole everything. house, everything, and, and got knocked out. Oh man, security disrespect. Oh yeah, oh, they did. Man, that was bad, Clipper man. Daryl, come on home, man. The Lakers would never do you like that. Come on home, man. <laughs> Flip man. that shit, man. Clip Easy pay job. Flip yeah, it. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> Easy security to beat you yeah. up. Hey, I'm Clipper Daryl. Got that boop. Yeah, hey. knocked him out. Hey, Snoop on, got something that'll paint it for you too. <laughs> on the house. They would never do. Laker fans like that. They did my boy bad, man. <laughs> they did he, man. Then they ran the clip back over and over on TMZ. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey up there with his drink in his hand. So earlier today, big Clipper fan, Clipper Dale, found out he's really not a Clipper fan. <laughs> Motherfucker. No respect. Mm. Rodney Dangerfield, the nigga. Mm. What's up with your uh, Steelers? What's next for him? We need to move some furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Same routine. You know, uh, I just feel like the league is moving forward, right? The play calling and the speed and the dogs and the, the youthfulness is missing. You can't compete unless you got that. The last four teams that's left got all of that. Yep. Everything I just said, there's dogs out there. Some of them niggas is young, like it's their first time. So it's not about veterans, it's about having those dogs who wanna win together as a unit. That's what a team is about. Like with the different nuggets, right? Switching to basketball. Them niggas was dogs last year. Yep. I didn't believe it when I was watching. Like, oh, them niggas, sorry. Them cubs from Canada and cubs from overseas. We finna knock them. Them niggas swept us. When did that. And then when I watched them live with my own two eyes, I'm like, oh, they're a real unit. They care about each other. Mm -hmm. Them niggas fuck with each other. They team. And they young. And they, they get down with each other. Like, they not just show up to the game one at a time. No, them niggas may pull up to the game together. How we didn't go to state. I you feel what I'm saying? Say, like yeah. it's, it's a come on, Jack. It's a, you gotta have that mm -hmm. feel about you if you want to win. Yeah, that mm -hmm. matters. And I feel like too. I mean, I think on both sides. I think really in basketball, but it, to me, it's it's less about the X and O's and the old way of ruling, and more about how you can communicate with these guys and make them understand and believe to go down to their level and help bring them up to where you're trying to take them. So I think it's kind of out with the old ways. You know, all due respect, Belichick is one of the greatest to ever do it, but I think the game has kind of caught him. You know what I mean? I, I love will Tomlin, catch you. I think, but I kind of think the game has caught him. So it, it, it's more about these young, innovative coaches, different kind of play calls, and again, relating to your players, which brings me to say, shout out Antonio Pierce, man. Got Raiders. that Raiders job, man. Oh, they gave it to him? Yeah, yeah. got it. Good shit, he deserved hey, it. The players, yeah. was, the locker room was in uproar. Niggas That's talking about, saying. I quit if you don't play. The yeah. best player said he, he wants out. So That's I mean, what that, TJ that. Watt said about uh, Tip Mike Tomlin, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. yeah, he go, I go. Oh, yeah, but uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. The players, are, he, he made the players believe. He spoke their language. You know what I mean? It's like this again. It's, you always need structure, but I feel like it's more about relating to players on all levels now than it is actually coaching. The hardest part about coaching that I found is relinquishing power, right? Because when you win the Super Bowl, you want to be the head coach that hoisting that trophy. But if you notice, the Super Bowl coaches that win the head coaches, why the next year – or two, they offensive coordinators get a job somewhere else, 
and they defensive coordinators to get a job somewhere else, as opposed to staying down in this system right here to become the head coach one day. It's to get him out of here, send him to a sorry ass team, make him look like he can't coach. Mm -hmm. Now, he's going to keep winning because he's got the main ingredient, the quarterback and the players. Mm -hmm. And anybody can sort of kind of plug mm -hmm. and play with the system mm -hmm. that they created. Fit people in, yeah, that's what Pop do yeah. in San Antonio. <clears throat> Come on, man. It's this this coaching. I'm learning this from being a coach and just watching the system, the merry-go-round, how it go down, and how when one of my head coaches that's in the NFL got dropped, boop, they dropped him. I hit him on FaceTime. The nigga wasn't sad at all. The nigga was like, oh, yeah, I'm trying to see what's happening with that other mm -hmm. job over there down the street from you. And whoop de whoop. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. It's really a business for them. Love mm -hmm. It ain't like how us athletes, how we really worried about, is the niggas going to sign us? Is the the next person gonna pick us up. Remember the Lamar Jackson situation mm -hmm. when they, thirty-one of y'all can get action. We just talked about that this morning. All thirty-one morning of y'all can touch. Cause guess mm -hmm. what happened? Nobody, Nobody wanted to fuck with him. <clears throat> I just said that this morning. Their mama stepped in. That black queen. Mm -hmm. That black queen came and get that agent out of here. Mm -hmm. You don't know what the fuck he talking about. I got about. this. I got this. Is my baby. And this is what's gonna happen. You gonna give my baby this, this, this. And if he win that motherfucking whole thing. Oh yeah, y'all finna yeah. He's finna rewrite this motherfucker. Yeah. What Patrick Mahomes got, he need times mm. two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now he gonna get it. Cause he's a marketing machine. He's a video game cover. Mm -hmm. He's who the kids wanna be. Right. Yep. He's more believable than anybody else in the league because we believe we can be him more than anybody. Even mm -hmm. though he got all that super speed and all that shit, he come from where we come from. Goddamn right. So we feel like we can be him faster than Mahomes mm -hmm. or anybody. No disrespect, but he the one, not the two. Yeah. Hmm. Since we on quarterbacks, let's stay there. You uh, gave C.J. Stroud a lot of love, spiritual kid, always spreading love and positivity. And, you know, the, the person he is is showing why he has so much success. You want to talk about him for a second? Yeah, man. Coach Superfly in my league, in the Snoop U Football League, that's his, you know, discovery, his, his kid. They played up under my umbrella, mm -hmm. which is the Snoop U Football League. We played for the same organization, which is Pomona Steelers, so I coached a team over him and under him for a couple of years. So I would see him at practice, engage with them. Superfly is one of my friends who became a coach after me. Like most rappers, we follow what someone's doing and then we get great at it and we become better. So Fly is an outstanding coach now. He coached that kid and showed him the ways of the Snoop U Football League and that stayed with him. So when he went on to high school and went on to Ohio State and got drafted, he remembered those values and those teachings that were taught to him. And you see it instilled in him when he speaks, when he talks, when he plays, the love that he's getting, the respect that he's getting. This is something that's instilled in the kid. So when he becomes a man, it becomes his everyday life. Mm -hmm. Whatever you put in that baby, it's, mm -hmm. it's gonna turn out mm -hmm. as a man. We didn't put gang banging in it. Mm -hmm. We didn't put go ride for the hood, mm -hmm. and get tatted up. We put learn this offense, learn this defense, learn what scheming is, learning a playbook, learning your schoolwork, mm -hmm. learning how to be respectable, learn to respect your elders, like learn to respect this. All the right shit. Give them life. Now it's up to them to make a decision because we give them all that. We don't save them all in my league. I mm -hmm. say that. It's not always a success story in my league. There's some kids we couldn't reach that we couldn't save, mm -hmm. but we don't give up on them. Right. It's just, it's a form of what we have to go through. Try another approach with us. Yes, sir. How good does it feel, you know, when you look at all the successful athletes that came out the SYFL? Man, to watch that Niner game, to watch Romeo Dobbs, Keyshawn Nixon, and Lenore from the 49ers all make big plays. fucking plays. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and big monstrous plays. Mm -hmm. But they've been doing this since they've been You've babies. You've seen it, yeah. In my, league, it. in my league at eight years old, you may have a night game at six o'clock with a thousand motherfuckers in the crowd. And the pressure is on. Mm -hmm. So when you 13 or 14, I'm used to this shit. Then yeah, we may yeah. fly to Florida and take on the number one team in the nation. Then you may go to Texas the next week and play the number two team in the nation. Then you go to Seattle to play a team with 15 year olds when they supposed to be 11 <laughs> with an NFL <laughs> fat ass coach cheating. Facts. And you still persevere. Mm. So you setting them up for success. Then it's one week when, when I was coaching and my head coach got suspended, this, my, my defensive coordinator got suspended this week and we didn't have a game because my league was fucked up because they tried to break my league down and take all the teams out. So I had to go ask a team from another league, could I play them? The team from the other league tells me, we'll play you, but your team has to play an older team from our league. 
We like, wow. So I can't tell my team, hey man, y'all finna play against some older white kids. I just say, hey, we finna, we got a game this week. Who we playing, Coach Snoop? So this team, bop, bop, bop. We get out there, them white boys way bigger than us. You can just see they out there like, we finna kill these guys. My niggas is like, let's go. Yeah. The game is cracking. Boop, 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 boop. We lose by like two points. Mm. Little homies is crying at the end of the game. I'm like, let me holler. I put them all together. I said, hey, mm -hmm, y'all nine, they 11. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their whole faces changed. And we went on a mission and won the rest of our games dope. and went on a mission like to win it all. Like it takes shit like that to mm -hmm. be like, okay, let me throw y'all in the fire because I know mm -hmm. one day in life when you get on that big stage and the whole world is watching them, dun, 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 dun. You've been doing this. That's what I do, Juju. You've been doing. Juju Smith-Schuster, last year's Super Bowl, the play that the flag, that's yeah. a kid out of my league. Yeah. He do the, 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 the zig move. Mm -hmm. Zig Bradbury up, zig. Everybody know the zig route if you're a DB. You can't be on that route because you're going to hold. He held the flag. The Chiefs win. Juju's got a ring. That's another kid from the league with a ring. Oh, my. Who you got in the Super Bowl this year? Black quarterback. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to say that. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I, I love the, the fact that the league has grown to where we actually have a black quarterback in the Super Bowl all the time now. Like last year was two. Mm -hmm. And I think, what is it, almost 16, 15 quarterbacks? Don't quote me, but I think it's like 15, 16 black quarterbacks now. And that's not a racist statement. Not that's at a statement all. of growth. It's come a long way. Of, of, of the, the league, league accepting, come a long way. Right. accepting the fact that we're not just mm -hmm. run around, catch the ball, tackle mm -hmm. somebody. No, we're the smartest guys on the field. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing right there, especially because that's, that was the whole thing. Black quarterbacks not smart enough. You know that was the tag? They're mm. not smart enough to be quarterbacks in the field. That's what they used to say. Right. But remember, when the quarterback that's not black is out of the NFL, he'll go get a job at an IBM corporation or somewhere with their reading numbers and doing all this kind I'll of shit. I'll go straight to Fox for 200 something million, like Tom Brady. Hello. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Word. Right, but it's, it's all about positioning, right? What are you going to do with that knowledge that you have? If you acquire the knowledge, it's your job to use that knowledge. You can't keep blaming them, blaming them. If you know they're hiring at these corporations for quarterbacks who have that mental, then you should be setting right. up yourself to say, okay, I'll try out at ESPN and Fox and all these other networks, right. but I'm going to also go to IBM Ooh. and these other motherfuckers and Google and them because my mind power is stronger than all these geeks that you got in here working that's training to be what I am already. Mm -hmm. I got the experience. Hello. That's the one thing Cope said, not to bring Cope up, but he was big on the mental side. He's like, we're already trained to be disciplined and, 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 and priorities and 1%. And you cross that mind to the business side. You know I mean, you apply that same kind of mentality. You can do whatever you want. I know Usher has been performing for a long time. He got all experience, but you performed in the 2022 Super Bowl. Any advice you're giving? Hell no. I'm not gonna get that nigga some advice. I nigga got all the bitches. That's what I said. <laughs> all the bitches. <laughs> Even the ones that's married, they like it. Like, my wife done went to this nigga show three times. I asked him, <laughs> why do you keep going to see this nigga? Like, is, what is he doing different? Like, and you sitting good. right up there with the nigga. He's my friend. I'm, t I'm gonna tell him to kick you out next time. <laughs> but the nigga got all the women. The nigga can dance. The nigga can roller skate. He look good. And he sound good in real life. How can you take advice when you have all of these things working in your favor? Like, this is the professional that I am. He in Vegas doing the residency, right? That's some Frank Sinatra shit that he doing. That's, you dream of doing that. There's only one level up from that, the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. That is training for the Super Bowl. Mm. That's preparation mm. for the moment to understand my engagement with the crowd. What songs they feeling? When do I dance? When do I roller skate? When do I go ballot? When do I pick it back up? Like, as a performer, it's like an athlete. You have to know when to know mm -hmm. when. Like, mm -hmm. it's the first quarter. I ain't finna give you niggas all of me right now. I'm only, I only want eight points and two rebounds. The third quarter, I want about 15, nine rebounds. Fourth quarter, I may gas you niggas out. I may not even sit down. Mm -hmm. But this is how we train ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys train yourselves Five in the points game. a quarter, you average 20. I'm on 10. <laughs> I'm greedy. Yeah. I'm Usher. And the word is on Snoop Dogg in a celebrity game, 
that nigga will put himself back in the game and he don't come out the game. Nigga, I seen it. We seen it. <laughs> 50 rebounds, nigga, we seen it. Hey, this dude pulled up Nigga to, say, I, hey. uh, who, who, they take me? Uh-uh, no, hold on. Uh -uh. Good coming out. I ain't coming out. Hey, homie, you gotta come out. Hey, this dude showed up uh, late to uh, Allegis did a game with, uh, <laughs> with uh, game. Quavo. Remember the shit out of the Mamba? Oh, yeah. This nigga came to the, to second, the, Mamba to the spot. second quarter. High, uh, high socks, chucks, high, uh, was it high top chucks? High top chucks. Came in there, bro, put work in for one quarter and then left. Dip. That's all he had. Just, just came to show his face real quick, in and out. Cause it, mad, out there really hooping, like trying to go. Couple Special. boys, give me that out of there. I need a bucket, I need another hilarious. one because I need to be on TMZ or something. Give me another one. All right, I'm, uh, start the car, man. We what them free shoes that nigga Quavo made? Give me them shoes too, nigga. That nigga made some sweet ass shoes. I ran off with them motherfuckers. Ran oh, off with the shit. plug twice. Yeah, that shit. That shit was funny. Speaking of, obviously Usher and uh, him performing in this year's Super Bowl. What was it like to perform at home uh, with, with family and and just something that was legendary? You know what? I was more into Dr. Dre than me. I was more about making sure that that's that's just the protector that I am. Like I protect the house. You know what I'm saying? Like I protect the house to make sure that the king look good. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? If you notice, I didn't do no Snoop Dogg songs. Yep. Not one song out of my catalog wasn't necessary. What's gonna make the king look right? Mm -hmm. Let the king drive. It's better when Dr. Dre in the driver's seat and Snoop Dogg in the passenger mm -hmm. seat hitting the switches. Looking out the window. Nah, facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, facts. it ain't gonna be right if I'm over here with this nigga holding the wheel and shit. And we arguing over the wheel. Nigga, let me drive, nigga. Ah, right, bah. Mm -hmm. mm -mm, I know how to play my position. Mm -hmm. I ain't got on no seatbelt, but I'm in the shot. Yeah. <laughs> <don't drive>. yeah. <laughs> when you get asked to host uh, the Olympics and you get you got asked to host the Olympic <laughs> in Paris, what is that detail? When I get asked to host the Olympics, that to me that goes into okay. This is a professional gig. How do you hone your skills and how do you be on your best to where they'll want to bring you back again? Mm -hmm. They want to bring you here because you have something that's missing. But how can you add on that without fucking that up? Like not coming in, overdoing it, trying to pour too much sauce on it. But they want Snoop Dogg. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. But at the same time, I'm going to go do some research on some of these sports and these events. Learn some lingo, ready. some slang. Prepare, so when I'm out prepare. there, it look good, it feel good. I may pick up an animal or two while I'm out there, some product to make my precision, you know, <laughs> precise. You know what I'm saying? Like right. it's all about the whole get down. I got a whole. I'm from the '70s, man, and anytime I watch things in the '70s, it always had coordination to it. All of the players, their cars would match their outfits, their girls' dresses mm -hmm. would be the same, and their home would be decorated the same way. So I'm thinking like that. Like, how do I bring all of this shit that I got to the Olympics, keep it clean, but keep it me. Mm -hmm. Speak to you and Kevin Hart's uh, chemistry with that. Kevin Hart, shout out to Kev for, mm -hmm. uh, for bringing me uh, into the equation as far as saying, Snoop, come do this Olympic thing with me at my spot. It'll be a good look. I'm like, fuck it, I believe in you, Kev. You know what I'm saying? You little motherfucker, you got LOL, nigga, let's go. It's mm -hmm. your company, let me help you blow your shit up and mm -hmm. brand your shit. So I go fuck with him and just, Shooting the shit's what we do. But niggas don't know. I'm a lightweight comedian. It's what I do. <laughs> so we back and forth. We do the shit we do and it's moments that become like Instagram reels and people playing them and they becoming viral. Like the horse crib walk. Exactly. That killed and people seeing it and they remember them executives are seeing it too. Mm -hmm. So they watching like shit. Maybe we ought to move that nigga out to minor leagues. And bring that nigga up here with these big boys because mm -hmm. he hitting grand slams down there. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, when the majors call you up, I don't want to have no slumping first week. Nigga, I want to have a mother. Hit. Mm -hmm. Out yeah. the gates, yeah. This nigga got 17 steals and 14 home runs in three games. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we talked just the other day about, you know, some stuff we got coming and, and, and how mm -hmm. you want to come correct and, mm -hmm. and, and, and get down. So... You know, we got our own stuff now, which we're really excited about. All the Smokes production, shout out DraftKings, but we definitely got a player for you to come suit in the booty and come talk your shit. Yeah, and you know I'm into it. You know, I'm always about innovation, and I love the fact that y'all took y'all shit from where y'all, mm -hmm. from that little garage to where y'all got it at now. Like, 
Now, I ain't trying to be funny. I'm just nah, saying, nah, like, but it's facts. That, that's nigga. The GGN started in the fucking garage, nigga. So I respect that garage mm -hmm. game because it teaches you how to be a Come little on, bit man. more that's hungry. Part of the grind. It is like, and if you think back, y'all probably didn't got a little softer since y'all left the garage. When y'all was in the garage, <laughs> you niggas was like, nah, I, I wouldn't say softer, but definitely richer. Yeah, richer, <laughs> nigga. Yeah, but, the, yeah. but I don't mean no disrespect. But I mean by like y'all when y'all was in that motherfucking garage stack. Anything goes. Now it's like, okay, Thanks. let's look at our interviews. Who's going to be on? Let's get our nah, questions together. Line these questions Never up. Never that. Let's have our sessions together. <laughs> nigga, y'all used to be like, y'all niggas sitting on that motherfucker like, yeah, nigga, so, uh, yeah, uh, nigga, so what you think about, uh, like, yeah. <laughs> Nigga, go back and look at y'all box, nigga. Remember, I'm a fan of this shit, nigga. I ain't just on here to be on here. Yeah, nigga. we owners uh, now. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, yeah, nigga. So y'all gotta think about the other side. It's like, right. okay, right, when I was on Death Row Records as an artist, I had a different mentality. I didn't give a fuck about the business and the branding and none of that shit. Nigga, I wanna be the dopest rapper in the world. Where my show money at, nigga? And you know what I'm saying? Who think they can get some? Mm -hmm. But as a businessman on Death Row Records, I have to look out for the artist, the business, the reality of the approach of Death Row, is it friendly? Mm -hmm. Is it is it scary like it used to be? Or is it happy when you see it? Is it approachable? Is it marketable? Is mm -hmm. it global? Like, I have to think about that instead of, let me sign this nigga from over here who don't like these niggas from over here. Right, yeah. And then let me go sign this nigga from over here who don't like these niggas from over here. Now I done put myself in a triangle mm -hmm. trying to keep Death Row true to what it was built on. Mm -hmm. It was built on that, but it's gonna live on this. Mm -hmm. To be so, successful. What is the goal? What is the, I mean, obviously tremendous. I remember you telling me years ago, NB, I'm gonna get Death Row. You was telling me that shit seven, eight, nine, when you was doing the football games mm -hmm. together. I'm gonna get Death Row, watch, mm -hmm. and you got it. I mean, what is it? Obviously, first and foremost, congratulations. But what does it mean? What's the goal? I mean, I'm a big fan of October London. Like, what's happening with Death Row? Difference. Difference between before and now. We have, levels and layers like October London, like you said, Jane Hancock, I'm R and B. Let's give them a different sound, a different look mm -hmm. in the beginning. And we have movies and pictures and projects that we working on, clothing line, jewelry, happy dad death row fucking beer that we got that's selling everywhere. Like I'm trying to make that shit Every way you look, you see death row. Right. Because it has to be that because ecosystem. It's, it's one of the most <laughs> interesting brands that was ever created and it never followed through it was only known for what you know it for you can always say the suge tupac snoop dr dre and blah blah this and that where's the business there's no business there was no business there it's like there's no it's made a lot of money but did niggas touch a lot of money did anything happen out of that that's still living only thing that's still living is the ip that's why when i bought it i knew that was important to protect that and to clean up all of the shit that was connected to it when I bought it because it was a lot of shit that was connected to it because of the people that was handling it. They was just working with anybody. And I'm like, no, clean that shit up. I'm starting from scratch. Everybody that was good, that was with Death Row when I bought it, they'll still come with me because they love Death Row and they all family any motherfucking way. Mm -hmm. All the ones that was bad, that didn't cut them niggas off, and let's build a new team of strong, powerful, smarter people, smarter than me. People who have jobs and have sold things and have worked in this business for mm -hmm. years and have a resume stronger than mine. So when I say I have a cast of employees, my employees' resume make me look like I'm the dumbest nigga on the team. Mm -hmm. The Death Row documentary. Can mm -hmm. you tell us anything about that, who we might uh, catch on that? <clears throat> yep, uh, we've been shooting that. Antoine Fuqua has been shooting mm -hmm. that. Um, me and Harry O, we like the um, the main focal pieces to it all, you know. And then you have all of the ensemble cast of members who participated: Lady of Rage, Corrupt, RBX, um, playing themselves. This is just the documentary. A documentary, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's gonna happen, though, Jack? I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Someone is going to give us a Death Row series. series. Oh, and believe that. You know, I started acting, so think about your boy if you need an extra or something. For real? <laughs> Look at my nigga. Yeah. <laughs> my close, nigga. Close mouth don't get fed. Say nigga. that to him. <laughs> um, any new uh, solo projects coming out on the uh, on the label? 
Yeah. I'm in the lab with Dr. Dre right now working cool. on. Ooh, that's yeah. what we waiting on. Ooh. Yeah. I was hoping you say that. Yeah, that's Death Row Aftermath. So Ooh. we finishing up that right now, tightening up the pieces to that. You know, he's a perfectionist, so. You got a time frame on that? Let me fuck you up real quick. The nigga called me one day about two years ago. It was like, nigga, come over. Let me do a couple songs with you. I'm like, all right. So I get over there. He's like, nigga, let me do your album. I'm like, all right, let's go. It's going to take me about two weeks. All right, fuck it. Let's go. We go in, knock out a couple songs. He hit me back. I need two more days. I need two more days. I got that call probably about 85 times. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga need two more days all the time. Perfection. But when you hear what we have and how he got me rapping, and it's like a grown Snoop Dogg. It's not like the yeah nigga invented it, but it's, it's a growth mm -hmm. to him. It's the way he selects his bars. It's the way he uses his voice. It's the way he... Like he, I'm talking about me like it's a third party moment. Right. This nigga used me like a fucking robot. <laughs> and I love it because I love to be produced. I love to be challenged. I hate when a motherfucker just take it for granted that I'm working with Snoop. Here's the beat. Make what a song. Want? Yeah. And I may say some bullshit. Cause I go through bullshit. I may be rapping about some shit I said a long time ago or shit that you don't want to hear. But if I'm being produced, we're creating this piece together. Mm -hmm. And this shit is masterful because my voice is a part of your music. It is actually an instrument, mm -hmm. as opposed to it just bouncing around the track. Use my voice like a fucking instrument. Mm. Let me be a part of the music. So when you hear Dre and Snoop, you always, this is what you're gonna learn. Every song that you've ever heard from Dre and Snoop, my voice is never on top, it's always in there because it's an instrument. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's doing. He's using me as an instrument right now to create this masterful album. Could we hear something after? I bang a couple for you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, Man, give me some boy. 30 years. <laughs> Come on now. What you say? Closed mouth don't get yeah, fat? I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Doggy style, 30 years. Congratulations. First and foremost, quick story. High school. I'm, that's my freshman year of high school. My little, home, my, my, my little white homeboy, Jeff. Jeff? Oh, you met Jeff. I, I met that motherfucker. I'm like, you talking about <laughs> yeah. the one that I met? Yeah. He bought that album three times. His mom took it from him all three times. That's he a was, real motherfucker. Like, he was you my know, little hey, homeboy my that had the, mom took had the, album, had the CD I'm money. Again. Hey, he, he would thrash his parents' room looking for that shit, bro. He bought that shit three times. Doggy I style. could just hear him now. Matt, fucking mom took my cassette <laughs> fucking again. Nah, nah, don't. But don't worry. I'm going to buy another one. <laughs> uh, but anyway, man, happy 30 years. Talk to us about that. There we go. See how we merchandising and shit? Mm -hmm. We marketing and branding. That's a little oh, tote bag. Hey, hey, Ashton had the jacket like that. Remember you sent Ashton two of the jackets oh, like that? Now, you know I represent. Little... Come <laughs> yeah. on now, I'm representing. Mm -hmm. But um, Doggy Style, right? 30th anniversary. That make me feel good that people still love that record after so long. But when I listen to it, I'm like, damn, that shit sound... Man, that shit still jam. It sounds so good. Like the, the, the way it come on in the bathtub and... It really feel like a nigga sitting in the tub and the homies ring the doorbell and come over and then kick off with George Clinton and Rage and Gin and Juice and like, it's a fucking movie. Like Dr. Dre really produced the fuck out of me, but we was hanging out so tough at that time. We was riding together. We was, we did everything together. So imagine two niggas with no wives doing their thing, working on an album. So he was learning me and figuring me out and learning the things that I love. Cause whenever I would ride with him in the car, I would always put a cassette in and it would be some old school shit playing. Mm -hmm. And whatever that shit was, would become a song. Just because either I would start singing some shit off of it or he would be like, nigga, who was that? I'm like, oh, nigga, that's the dramatics. Oh nigga, we fucking with that. Like that kind of shit. So that's what this record reminds me of the brotherhood that me and Dre created that still exists to this day as far as him trusting in this young nigga from Long Beach and saying, I'm finna produce your next record like I did. Easy E's, DOC's, NWA's, Michelle A, mm. anything I ever touch, nigga, it go, go gadget. Oh, and we just did the chronic, by the way, mm -hmm. if that ain't proof. Mm -hmm. So I need you to be you, Snoop. Be raw as fuck. Two songs is freestyles, no writing. Just mm -hmm. raw. Mic check. Mic check one, two. Did it. Finish the shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, let me do it. Let me go write it now. Nigga, write it. Nigga, it's already done. That's what that is. So 
when I think of this record, all the memories of me being young, fresh, dope, and having somebody like Dr. Dre be young, fresh, and dope mm -hmm. too. It's a crazy mixed up world. You know where I got that from? It's a doggy dog. I got that from a song called If It Ain't One Thing, It's Another, Richard Dimplefields, mm -hmm. which was Betty Wright's artist. He had a song where it says that it's a crazy mixed up world. It's a doggy dog world. What happened to that? He know how this shit go. It's a doggy dog. <laughs> uh, uh, everybody talking smack, running game on this and that. I got that from that and told Dr. Dre, I want the dramatics to sing that right there. And the dramatics knew it. And they put that motherfucker right in and then whoop, right into doggy dog. Sounded like it was they shit. That's how good they sound. See what I'm saying? And niggas wasn't into taking other niggas shit. Old school niggas? Oh, they don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> you tell an old school nigga, hey man, I need you to sing. Nigga, I ain't singing that nigga shit. Right. What's wrong with mine? I wrote my right. own shit, nigga. Right. Nigga can't write for me. <laughs> hey man, Unc, I ain't asking him to write. I, I just need you to sing. <laughs> nigga, I ain't singing that, nigga. <laughs> the dramatics? I got footage with me and them niggas on, Bro, how on the side of video? a bus, nigga, in Detroit, nigga. I called them niggas. <laughs> it was snowing. I had this badass record. I said, ooh, I got a record for y'all, Unc. And this one, they was mad at each other. Cause you know, they got hot after my record and shit. So you know when niggas got hot, they done made two, drew two dramatic groups. <laughs> one with him as the lead singer and one with him. Just like the Temptations, nigga, this shit is real. I called them niggas, them niggas like, pull the bus up on the side of some, some, some street. So I pulled the tour bus up on the side. We got the studio in the back. First nigga pull up, Ron Banks, he come in. What's up, nephew? <laughs> what you need me to sing? I'm like, all right, Ron, we going we got this shit in the back. They already laid it down. He go in the back, then LJ Reynolds come like 10 minutes later. He look and see Ron in the back, pop his champagne. When you ready for a real motherfucker to sing, I'll be up here waiting on you. <laughs> I'm like, damn, these niggas is really into it. So the nigga come out the back and Ron look at him. And they looking at each other like they finna argue. And one of the homies then put a cigarette in motherfucking LJ Reynolds champagne. <laughs> that nigga <laughs> lost his mind. We ended up not doing the song. They got in the argument. He left. He stayed. He was singing off key. It was just the worst shit ever, bro. I wasn't making that video, though. That the video dog was dog world? Yeah. What niggas don't know is Ricky Harris came up with that treatment. Rest in peace. He had that treatment for Lottie Dottie. But Dr. Dre flipped it and put it into um, Doggy Dog World. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know none of them niggas. I mean, I knew them as a fan, but I didn't know how to get in touch with all of them 70s stars that I grew up loving and watching. So Dr. Dre and all of them pulled the switch and got them all there. Man, I sat next to Ron O'Neill, mm -hmm. Rudy Ray Moore, Fred Williamson, Jim Brown. Antonio Vargas. When I sat next to all of them, man, and we chopped it up. Rerun. Nigga, me and Rerun was... Pop lock. Nigga, it was... You got to understand, I'm a 70s baby, cuz. This was the greatest shit ever, cuz, to be in a video with my favorite motherfuckers, and they knew who I was. Mm. That's all I cared about. They knew who the fuck I was. Like, damn, I can't believe they know who I am. Mm -hmm. Like, nothing else mattered to right. me, but... Damn, cuz, they know who I am. That's how young I was in my mind, like... When I was at the video, I wasn't even tripping. I was just in full character. The little acting we did in the beginning, I remember when I told Ricky Harris, I said, uh, yeah, when my bitches walk up, I'm gonna snap my fingers twice, and the bitch is just gonna disappear by moose. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, yeah, 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 cat daddy, that's some pivot right there. <laughs> but me and Ricky, this is my nigga, this is my childhood buddy, so me and him used to always be in character, so we love shit like that. And he was like, yeah, nigga, do it. Snap your fingers twice and make the bitches leave. And I did it. I walked up and, yeah, hey, 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 cat, daddy, hey, what's going on? The bitches just left. Yeah, man, you know, I was just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nigga, I'm living my life right now. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> wow. uh, a lot of times, athletes, entertainers, the transition, there, there's a struggle. And I think more than ever now, it's more about. The business. I, I I feel like when me and Jack came up and when you first came up, like you said, you were just an artist. It wasn't necessarily talked about, you know, the, the the type of business shit. It was just about go get your checks and then, you know, right. go do what you want to do with it. As someone who's been able to transition and, and really as big as you've ever been, with all due respect, still, which is not due respect, that's great. 
what would you tell someone that is trying to understand the athlete, so to speak, the entertainer, so to speak, that's going to transition into business? I think you got to learn what business that you're after and start honing that skill now, just like you did with your entertainment skill and your athletic skills. You have to practice that. You have to learn about it and learn how to be great at it. And the same goes in the business. Like, I don't just get deals because I can talk shit good. I really know business and I really studied and I really understood it. And then I go acquire the knowledge and get so good to where I have a demand and then I can hire people to help me. So the, you know, the demand ain't so much on me, it's just me being creative. So what I say is you gotta really work hard at knowing the business and knowing what business you wanna do because all business is not for you. You know, everybody's not going to be an analyst when they finish doing sports. Everybody's not going to be able to translate into podcasts. And some people are going to translate into, you know, behind the scenes or doing other things. You just got to figure out what that thing is. I didn't know that I would be a fucking football coach with a football league and making kids music and doing all the things that I'm doing. But I had to take that choice on making a decision on this is a business that I think I can attack, that I could be good at, and it's not much of a risk. It's a lot of reward. I'm gonna try this. Mm. Brodus Foods, partnership with Master P. Y'all have been in business for about 30 plus now. Uh, what does he mean to you and, and what is Brodus Foods? Master P is probably the smartest businessman I've ever met because he taught me the most important lesson of it all, marketing and branding yourself and product. Product don't talk back. Mm. <laughs> Product, it, out, it outweighs talent because talent only can take you so far. Mm. But how much product have you been buying since you was a kid that you still buy? And it has no talent connected to it. Mm -hmm. Has no celebrity pushing it or promoting it. You just stuck on buying this certain shit that you've been buying, whether it's cereal, ice cream, potato chips. It's a brand that you fucking feel acquainted with. Nigga, go get me some Ruffles. Nigga, get them Doritos. Now it's like, nah, go get that broadest foods. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Like teaching a whole new system because Snow the groups. shit is good. It ain't just like a nigga just throwing some ghetto shit out. Master P just made some fake ass Fruit Loops and put some sugar on them and wants you to eat them. Nah, nigga, this shit is certified, mm -hmm. nigga. Mm -hmm. For real, for real. This nigga know his shit. That's what I love about him is that he learns the business before he does the business. Mm. You can't goof proof him. He ain't, you ain't finna, no loopholes, none. Mm -hmm. He done all that shit with his own money before it even hit the market. Testing, giving it away, this shit, feedback, taste tests, all that shit to where it's like, nigga, 99 out of 100 said they love it, nigga, let's go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we didn't gave away a million dollars worth, so they'll buy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See that system? The giveaway, get back. Mm -hmm. Not the robbery. Mm -hmm. Flagship up. Building in your community, take all the money and run the fuck off. Mm -hmm. Nah, new system. Mm -hmm. New ways. Sketchers, congratulations on that, by the way. Thank Martha Stewart for that. Because mm. somebody from my team was blocking. I ain't mm. going to say his name, but the nigga was blocking. But he was blocking for the right reasons because he felt like Sketchers and me didn't connect. He felt like it was a brand that was beneath me. Mm. But nigga, all shoes are beneath me. So, <laughs> so what I did was That's a bar. That's a bar. Yeah. I took Martha That's Stewart's bar, advice. Man. She was like That's a bar. She said, Snoop, you should get with Skechers because they don't have anyone like you. Mm. They'll give you as many shoes as you want. You should meet the owner. He used to run LA Gear. Mm. When I meet the owner, Rob, oh my, he's my kind of guy. <laughs> Elder guy, player, understand it, love it, keep young people around him, bring me down to the office. Look, they done made 30 shoes with my name and all kind of shit, got an office laid out. This is what we want to do for you, what you think? Mm. I think, where's the paper? <laughs> I need to sign. And then we're going to make shoes for women, kids, basketball shoes. Them shoes that Randall and all them niggas wearing right now, they're mine. Hello? All, all the whole game. <laughs> Who, who's wearing them? Julius. I didn't know that was Those you. Snoop Dogg basketball shoes by oh. Skechers. This, we sliding in. We low key. We ain't laying ain't put my name on them. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just going to rock them one mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Remember, you gave me them shits for the Lakers. 
I did. I took care of you, bitch. I <laughs> took care right. of you. You understand me? That's right. I got I, I to gotta find those. <laughs> that picture. <clears throat> no, but they, they, they are a brand that what people don't know is they number two. Nike number one, they number two. They got the most stores around the whole world. They the, they the shoes that everybody buys. So you got parents and uh, people that work at hospitals, police officers. They make shoes for all walks Skaters. of life. Skaters. Yes. So it's not just like Jordan and Nike, right? And then it's a couple other shoes from Jordan that you may, I mean, from Nike that you may buy. Nigga, they shoes is being bought from the whole house. In some countries, all they do is wear Skechers. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at that like, mm -hmm. I'm global. I ain't going to get no deal with Jordan. He don't want me on his team. He already got too many people like me. Let me go find somebody that ain't nobody paying attention to. Go do my thug fizzle with him and get mines in while I ride in, show them some things they ain't never seen and let them take me places I ain't never been. As soon as I go to holler at him, a week later, my nephew go up there unannounced after he get driven out from Adidas and they like, what, we sh what should we do? I'm like, what y'all calling me for? I said, y'all in the office? They said, no. I said, well, act like y'all ain't in the office. And they couldn't give him the play because he ran over there trying to get the play. But I had already beat him too. Y'all mm -hmm. reading between the lines. Y'all yeah, mm -hmm. already mm -hmm. trying to go get the play. But the boss had already met the deal double. <laughs> <laughs> I met the dog, man. But let me tell you, I'm I'm with Jordan. I've been with Jordan for a long time. Ain't nobody like you at Jordan, dog. Facts. I can tell you that. Facts. And I respect his brand so much to where I would rather support it than compete against it. Or to be in the same lane with it. Mm -hmm. I'm in a whole nother demographic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Nigga, nigga, he's here forever, nigga. He's mm -hmm. the greatest to ever do it. Nigga, I was a fan as a kid, a fan as a grown up. Loved him at North Carolina until they ran up on my Georgetown Hoyas. But it is what it is. He's yeah. the GOAT. He yeah. is him. And I respect his business hand. And when I watch that air movie, I'm like, oh, that was some more game. I don't win that position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, like I'm that. watching the game. It's this the game I'm watching. Mm -hmm. Magic. I don't fuck with them and go with Converse. Okay. Nike, Nike. Look how that turned out. Yeah, Mikey, Nike. <laughs> <laughs> Are they Mikeys or Nikes? Right. Mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Only fans try to throw a hundred million at a uh, hundred million at you. What happened? Come on, man. You know that. <laughs> Matt, you know the boss lady. Don't come in there playing no motherfucking games with me, nigga. You didn't dealt with her before. I didn't. I didn't. So I don't hear that shit. I didn't know. Nigga. So that was that, that was the play, though. I because I didn't. I just caught the headline. I didn't get to hear the whole story. I was story, on with so. Slink, nigga. You know Slink, right? Slink Johnson. Yeah. Me and Cuz jumped Smoke on. Smoke yours. Yeah, we jumped on like some ghetto ass, like just two man podcast because we watched Shannon and everybody do that shit. I'm like, nigga, let's get on real quick. So we pop on. Just to pop some shit, right? Because we got some shit. Well, he got some shit where he'd be like, nigga, I know your mama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know your mama too, nigga. Because remember, me and him the same age. <laughs> nigga, I know your mama. Nigga, it was 1974. We was hanging out at that. <laughs> <laughs> you understand me? So we popping our shit. And a nigga, like, he say something to me. And I'm like, yeah, man, you know, OnlyFans, man. One of my homegirls over there, she made about, like, you know, 20 mil. And she hit me with, hey, D.O. Dub. They say they'll give you 100 million if you pull that thing out. So I, was, I didn't know what, what it was for. Yeah. Yeah, to pull that thing out. <laughs> My bad. On live TV. I'm like, no. Nah. Is it on live TV? No. Nah. <laughs> no way. Yeah, no. Nah, nah. No amount of money. Jack, if you were single, would you do it? For a mil hundred million? For if you were single. Mm -hmm. I got kids. Res uh, respect. Thank respect. you. See, that respect. part right there. I got grandkids. <coughs> See that part, like Me not too. just kids, I got grandkids. <laughs> so when I got, gr right? I got granddaughters. Yeah. Too, shit. yeah. You just put that thing on on OnlyFans? <laughs> Not nope. at all. They gonna know it's mine though, cause they ain't never seen one like this. <laughs> they be like, that motherfucker's notorious. <laughs> Speaking of kids, grandkids, I, I I see that brings a lot of uh, of joy to you. I've yeah. got to see you around your grandkids. I, I I love to finally see the. I don't know if you've always taken vacations, but I, I know of late you've been taking more vacation with the family. Yeah, it looks beautiful. You got the grandbabies out there. What does what does grandfatherhood mean to you? Uh, get away with everything. Yep. Violating, getting mad at mom and daddy if they ever raise their hands at my grandbabies, mm -hmm. if they raise their voice at them. When they wrong, they right. When they right, they right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what it is? It's like, Papa is the reason. Yep. Like, the last time we was on the um, on the vacation, they pull up with my baby girl, and she mad, and they come in the house, and she just storm off running just like a little white girl in a movie, in a horror movie. Just runs away. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? She running this shit. She runs away. I'm like, hold on. We on the island. I don't know what kind of animals this shit is out here. So I go chase her down. 
and I catch her. First, she mad. She mad at me now. So, you know, Papa say all the right words and all the right shit. And she gave me a smile, grab her hand. We walk back in the house. I walk her in the back. And I win her over. And I'm like, these is moments that I love. How they lost her. Mom and daddy lost her attention. She was mad at them. But Pawpaw come in mm -hmm. and get her happiness back. Get her back to being. Then I shared some corn nuts with her. She's never had corn nuts. <laughs> And they were the greatest thing that she ever tasted in her life. These was barbecue, oh, that's these Hawaiian, yes. nigga, Hawaiian barbecue corn. The kind in the county, nigga, that's, you, you eat like this, nigga, be like. <laughs> My grandbaby would stand on top of me like, I'm like, damn, you like this? She was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like yeah, but just to be able to share that moment, right? her first experience, tasting that or chilling with her pawpaw from mad to happy, like, this shit mean the world to me, man. Like awards and all that shit is cool, but that's the real reward right there. Mm -hmm. I feel like, Goddamn you know, man. you grew up in front of our eyes since we were kids. You was on TV, making music, and and to see where you are right now. Do you ever kind of just sit back and obviously you're still continuing to climb the ladder, but do you ever just sit back and be like, man, it's been a hell of a ride thus far? I'm gonna tell you what I told Kiki Palmer earlier today, Matt. I ain't got time to watch my highlights when I got a game to play tomorrow. Mm. I feel you. Mm. Another bar. <laughs> That's a fact, Jack. When I see Snoop Dogg shit, I get fascinated with it. Like if I watch an old movie or old whatever the fuck, I really be locked into that shit, like watching it as a fan. Like, mm -hmm. damn. Seeing where I was good, where I was bad, where I was weak, how I've grown. And, like, I watch it like a coach watching mm -hmm. an athlete to mm -hmm. critique him. Game tape. Yeah, like, nigga, you should have, see right here? You should have backed up, and nigga, you, you shot too fast. So you, like, damn, all right, I get it. Because some movies I was in, great actors brought out great acting in me. And in some movies I was in, I was terrible because the script was terrible, the actors was terrible, and it just was what it was. It was an opportunity, and I didn't give a fuck. I just wanted to be in a movie. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Then it was like, nah, nigga, I want to be a star. I like being a star. You got to have that ego about yourself. You got to have that. It's like a, a athlete. The dogs say, nigga, I want the ball. Mm -hmm. The regular niggas be like, all right, I'm open. I'll play my position. What you need me to do? I ain't him. I want the rock. Mm -hmm. I want the rock because I'm going to put out some points. Yeah. Um, Tell your camera, your solo right there, the movie, where they can find it. The movie is Underdogs on Amazon Prime, January 26th, starring Snoop Dogg, Mike Epps, Tika Sumter, George Lopez, Andrew Schultz, and a whole host of kids and players and people that just made this thing come together. So make sure y'all go check it out. The Underdogs coming to a hood near you. Quick hitters. One song, your favorite song you love to perform live. My favorite song I love to perform live. Or maybe two. Fuck them other niggas is one I love. We used to have a motherfucking march to that shit. That's KLC? Hell yeah. Yeah. Niggas used to march to that motherfucker like that. I don't get to perform that much. Come on, nigga. Come on, me. You know, I'm from the South. Quit playing, nigga. You already know. Jack. Them niggas was Dr. Dre on steroids to the South, nigga. Straight up. Them niggas was coming back to back with a record every two weeks. <laughs> and I think Gin and Juice too I love performing Gin and Juice just because I watched that song become a cult song for different genres they have a country version to Gin and Juice and a jazz version and it fucks me up that I'm that old to where they remade my songs <laughs> in these genres and this is like 20 years ago and they didn't change my fucking lyrics at all that shit be blowing my mind. I'm like, am I that good? So that's why I don't watch my highlights. Mm. See, I get caught up and shit. Did I do that move? Shit, let me go try that move <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, shit. I ain't, I ain't what I used to be. Mm. I should have shot a jump shot. Because <laughs> I only get one duck a game now, by the way, fellas. That's it. Yeah. That's it. It's either at the beginning on, or the end. On them nine foot hoops in there? Eight and a half. <laughs> I would got, I would got me one in and I you struggled. Better? I struggled. I got it. <laughs> Top three albums of all time. Don't have mm. to be hip hop either, because I know you jam a lot of old school. Yeah. 
I'm gonna go with a. Uh... Oh wait. I love that Claudine album. I ain't even gonna front. Y'all probably don't even know what that is. That Claudine by familiar. Curtis Mayfield, Gladys Knight and the Pips is for a movie called Claudine. That motherfucker cold. The whole album is the by them? The whole thing. The Curtis, by them? Curtis wrote the whole album for Gladys Knight and the Pips yeah. and it's called Claudine. It's got a song in there called Mr. Welfare, a song in there called To Be Invisible. I mean, it's, it's, it's so connected to the movie and our kid, our childhood. That's definitely one. Um, Rick James, come on, man, with Busting Out. What album was that? That was Busting Out. That was the album. That motherfucker. Well, all right, you squares. It's time to smoke. <clears throat> Fire up this funk and let's have a talk. Come on, Rick. That album right there. And then. Uh, I'm going to be biased. I'm going to say doggy style. Mm. <laughs> it doesn't hurt to say it. I'll just say it. Fuck it. Doggy style. Mm. All the while we do it doggy style. Mm -hmm. Yo, motherfucking hoe. Shout out to George Clinton for getting his start of the day. One thing you wish you were better at. Be impatient. I'm impatient. I'm very impatient. I can admit that. I don't like to wait. I go to restaurants, I order my food before I get there. My wife get mad because I didn't act like I'm going to the bathroom. I didn't get the chef a hundred dollars and told the nigga what I want. So while they sitting down bullshitting and shooting the shit in my food and showed up <laughs> and they looking at me and I'm grubbing like a motherfucker. They like, we're supposed to be eating together. I'm like, uh, we're supposed to be eating. Period. Period. We are together. <laughs> Who your first celebrity crush? My first celebrity crush. Probably Thelma from Good Times. Hold up. <laughs> Good one. I met her in real life too. I told her, trust it, Thelma. You still fine as a motherfucker. I used to dream about you. You know that, right? For real. I used to call you baby girl just like James did. <laughs> <laughs> baby girl? Uh, who's your current top five in the league right now? Basketball players? Mm -hmm. That motherfucker from the Nuggets. Yo kick. Hey, hands down. I'm like, it used to be Giannis. That nigga then came out of nowhere and he don't fuck around. That nigga right there, him off the tippy. Yeah. Uh when John Morant is on the court, mm, man. Yeah, he I can't even front cause that nigga is different. I hate playing that nigga, man. He, he got a jet pack on He is a goon with the spoon. And he shoot threes too. He worked mm -hmm. on his three. I seen mm -hmm. that. They thought he was going to be bullshitting. He worked on his three. Shout out to John Moran for yeah. working on your John shot when John. you was off. I seen that. Get Good better. shit. We're going to praise mm -hmm. you, too. Niggas ain't going to just beat you down. We're going to praise you when you do right. Facts. You did that. Facts. Mm -hmm. We knew he can hoop. Off Tippy. <laughs> no question. Rippy Tippy. Well, we all had that same problem having them associates, you know, association by affiliation until you understand that. Yeah. It can't get you to your destination. Yeah. So I say John Morant's definitely in there. I like the nigga from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Shame. Oh, that SGA. nigga, he play like Snoop Dogg. I like him. <laughs> that nigga play like the T.O. Double. I fucks with him. That's three, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Giannis be turning his light on and off, man. And be the same way. Like, well, wait a minute. And be keeping his light on a little bit more. Bro, he throw, on one right now. I'm going to throw him in be there. I, that's why I had to check myself. Ooh. I throw him in there and be. I have to. I, I know the game, nigga. I'm still paying attention. And one more, the young goon from Minnesota. Man, Anthony that Edwards. nigga will bang on your ass. He a problem. Right now. He old school. I will bang on your ass right now. Mm. That's my top five right now. No Lakers in there right now. No disrespect. No, Brian, no. you coming off the bench for being the old ass nigga with all that game. You still, still. show up, nigga. You still show up, nigga. <laughs> still. Co-star in one movie. Who would you want to co-star with? Mm. Great question. Tom Cruise. Mm. Cause Tom I know it's gonna be big. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> it's the deal double and Tom Cruise. Yes, sir. Yes, right. sir. Cut the shit, Jack. Let's yeah. go to the biggest box office we God can damn get right. to. <laughs> Mission Impossible Nine, nigga. Fuck it. Got down right. right. One guest you would like to see on All the Smoke. I will, hold on. We already asked you this question. We yeah. just we, we, there's one person we want. Yeah, we want. We, 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 we asked you this before, Doctor Dre. We want Dre. Come on, man. We said it last time. We want time. Dre, dog. That's all we want. I think y'all should try to get Sade. Yeah, that'd be dope. 
Ooh, I don't never different. see her doing interviews. No, you know her? Be different. I'm trying to do a song with her. If I get on you all show that I can slide the, the yeah, beat we can right make next all that work. I can put the beat next to her on the phone like y'all be doing. <laughs> you hear that? Mm-hmm. You hear that? <coughs> hear that beat? <laughs> well, man, we appreciate your time again. It was great to catch back up. Underdog on Amazon Prime, January 26th. Make sure you check it out. Go check it out. We're going to slide to the premiere tomorrow night. Looking forward Y'all to that. Y'all coming? Yeah, we're going to be up there. So Matt, do you remember when I used to have those premieres, that, those smoke premieres? Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, niggas don't talk about that. Snoop Dogg used to have premieres where you could smoke, Jack. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if you ever been mm-hmm. to Nah, I wish I would have mm-hmm. loved to take part in one of those. Nigga, I used to throw premieres, nigga, and rent that motherfucker out. As soon as the lights go off. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. All you see is smoke. Yeah, right. It's everywhere. It was amazing. And you had one not too. I think right when COVID hit, remember we had to stay in our. We didn't have to stay in our cars. Most people stayed in their cars and smoke. We had what, to what, drive in. Yeah, what was? Yeah, that was a drive-in night. What movie I showed? Uh, I think an old school Purple movie. Purple Rain. No, uh, what you call this movie? Uh, the one with the white girl killing him or trying to kill him. Remember? Uh, Get out. The je- yeah, the jealous. Was it, was it Dion? Oh, yeah. Dion Taylor's movie. Yeah. Okay. That oh, shit was right. good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. With uh, Hillary Swank and yeah. Uh, yeah. that shit was good, nigga. Niggas yeah. didn't leave their cars. Dope. Hell yeah, it was like a real drive-in. You did something else too, though. You did an old school night too, I think. I did Purple yeah. Rain. I did Which Way Is Up. I did Willie Dynamite. That's what we sat in that car and just smoked the whole I'll thing out, remember? Oh, bro. We was I put on some old school movies for your ass, my nigga. Like, I'm with that <laughs> shit. Boy. Yes. I know one of you motherfuckers ate my chicken. I hope you choke on the goddamn bone. <laughs> Damn, man, man, you show sure is built. <laughs> Congratulations, good luck. Looking forward to more greatness. This is my favorite show though, cause I was happy for y'all on Showtime. I'm happy for y'all. Every time I see shit go viral with y'all show, I love it. I love the interviews y'all be getting with all of the athletes, how they be so raw with y'all and real and authentic, and how motherfuckers love sharing their secrets with y'all. Like that's a gift, because. We real secretive once we become successful. So to be able to open up and share those stories and information with y'all means that y'all in a safe spot. So keep up the great work. Appreciate Appreciate it, bro. That's it.